Hi everybody, welcome to week 8 of the art workshop. Uh, we've had a great run this time. I really feel confident about all the schools participating and the students participating. If you notice, today is a little different than uh, the classroom setting. Well, there's a few reasons for that um, that led up to us having to shoot from my shop in my little studio I'm trying to put together here. Um, but it does pay off though because week 8 really centers around the submission process. So what your book should look like, how to submit those, and a few more questions that I've received pertaining to lettering. So we'll be able to cover those better, I think, in this workshop because, in this setting, I should say, because I'm able to zoom in so you can see actually what I'm doing. Um, that is, you know, if everything works according to plan, which it usually doesn't, but that's, that's how it goes. So today we are focusing in on the submission process. So KVEC has sponsored this amazing workshop for the students in the KVEC region. It is centered, as we've been saying, all along through Project Prevent. So Project Prevent's theme, you, you, those are available. We made those available to you, the different topics you could choose from, things dealing with uh, issues facing students today, problematic stuff that could lead into trouble or, or uh, pitfalls students could find themselves in or, or see their friends fall in. So we are centered around that. So that means that hopefully you've designed your story with that as a certain theme or at least a character experiencing things that we focus on in Project Prevent. These things are all important. Drugs, bullying, so on and so forth. Now if you haven't already, um, be sure and request a copy of Writing with Pictures. Every classroom gets a copy. We received the books in last week. We had those available at the KVEC Prom Promising Practices uh, Summit. So you could have stopped by and got one of those then. If you don't have one, contact me and I'll make sure your class gets one. Okay? Um, we will be hopefully have time to do a little drawing at the end of today's workshop uh, if all goes well. But today we are covering the submission process, so all questions that pertaining to that will be answered today. I'd like to thank KVEC and Kelly Thompson and Project Prevent for making this workshop possible. I look forward to seeing what all you uh, have created during these eight weeks. Again, the submission deadline is December 14th, okay? That means we have to have all the books in our possession by December 14th. That doesn't mean you can postmark them in the mail by then. So um, let's get ready, and we're going to go ahead now and, uh, and, and talk a little bit more about the submission process for the 2016 Art Workshop. <music> Okay, everybody, we're going to go ahead now and move into the visual aspect of today's workshop. And one of the important things that we always want to stress is that um, creating this, this, this book, this project that you've been working on, this should be a fun project, this should be something you shouldn't feel stressed about, and the submission process is no different. You shouldn't feel stressed out about this process because this process is something that it can, can be simplified down to just labeling correctly, to ensure that students receive their work back, the bound book that we're binding, and then um, we'll talk a little bit more about how it's going to work after the workshop is, is over. So, big key points to remember, December the 14th. All the books need to be turned in to us by this date. That means they need to be in our possession. Not we're waiting on them, hoping they'll arrive, assuming they'll get here soon. Everything must be turned in by this date, okay? It's really important that we do that. We've extended the deadline a little bit for everyone, uh, for everybody to get their books in, do additional work to it, make sure it's polished, looks nice, uh, everything's the way you want it. Because um, before it was it was November 14th. That's coming up only in a couple weeks from now. So, so December 14th, you should have plenty of time to get your books in. Okay, so this is an important date we all want to remember. Now, as we move into the submission process, okay, here's a few things that is key to um, turning in your work and making sure that everything's finalized. Okay. When you mail this to me, you need to use a, a, an envelope, of course. So we have different classes um, and different schools. Um, and then, you know, your teacher. This is information that needs to be uh, 
included in the packet okay I'll go over this more in depth in a second just kind of giving an overview right now okay so when you mail this to me um, put all the students work whether it's one student or 20 in a packet and when you send this to me um, my, my, my address is and be sure and write this down so it's uh, put Epling you can just put Christopher Epling will simplify Christopher Epling Christopher Epling P.O. Box 183 okay that's a 183 Regina R-E-G-I-N-A Kentucky K Y four one five five nine. Okay, this is the uh, address you'll use to submit your pack. All your students' works into us. I will be taking all the books over to KVEC. Okay, where we will be looking through them to select the thirty-five students. Thirty-five. Okay, that's. Uh, way up from what our, our last workshop where we could only do 10 or so 35 students okay 35 students are going to be published that's that's amazing that's incredible okay out of these 35 students that are going to be published we're only going to select six okay and I say select because we're not going to ask you to do it we're not going to hope you do it you're going to have to apply to do this, okay? Because it, it's an honor, it's a privilege, it's an opportunity to uh, participate in this program, all right? Six students will go on to work in the entrepreneurial project. That means you'll be creating uh, your own small business, okay? Okay? Very, very, very amazing, wonderful, awesome opportunity here that we have for you. So just keep all this in mind. Uh, December 14th is the deadline. You want to include your your class, um, your, your, your school name, okay? Um, your class could be f under the teacher name and then the student name. So let's talk a little bit how to break this down. How do we how do we put these packets together? And I've brought some stuff to show you. Hopefully make this process a little easier. Um, let's see what we can do here. Alright, so in your packet, what you're going to have is, of course, a manila envelope or an envelope similar to this. Okay, um, we'll put all your students' work in that. Clearly identify the representative from the school up here. So your teacher's name, whoever's sending the packet to me from the school. Be sure and have your name listed. Don't just put the school's name. Okay, um, then my address down here. And as I said earlier, it's uh, I'll put this on the screen. Hopefully, I can manage to do that. My skills are a little, I'm a little rusty with editing, and, and but I'll, I'll do my best to make it work out. But you want to put my address at, below. Now, when you're starting to prepare these books, okay, the actual students' works, and I have an example that I brought with me here. This is a student's work from um, Paintsville High School, okay. Miss Sandra Coleman brought this to me to show me her amazing progress. I'm sharing a little bit of her work here. I hope she doesn't mind, but it's brilliant. This is going to be a graphic novel. Um, characters that she's come up with, a storyline that she's been working with for a long time. This is the pencil pages. Notice how she's lettered in her her uh, story, all the, the, the narration, the communication, it's all in her story. Now, um, she has her story ready except she needs to ink it. So she's going to be inking this um, and then resubmitting it as a packet, okay? So this will be one student from Paintsville. So what needs to happen though? Let's say, let's pretend I'm preparing this book along with a few others to send to me. I'm going to pretend that I'm uh, Miss Coleman. So what I will do is I'll take a sheet of paper. It doesn't have to be this color. Take a sheet of paper, put it at the front of the student's work, okay? And then you'll want to put on this piece of paper, you want to put the student's name, okay alright put their grade okay put your name even though you've got this listed so this is teacher's name okay 
you want to list this again because when when these things start to be sorted if one of these gets off to the side or something these pages help identify okay so students name grade your name school okay and then the type of book you're submitting what I mean by type of book is it a picture book okay is it a graphic novel or it or is it a um, chapter book so you list one of these as the type of book right all this information then will be attached to the students work and you'll have one page it's called a cover page right for every single students submission right don't staple please use a binding clip or a paper clip to put all these together uh, stapling I'll have we'll have to tear the pages there's there'll be holes left in them this one's stapled but it's okay um, I think she's gonna do some more work to this so you know please use a paper clip or a binder uh, to submit these pages okay you can clip all of them together you don't need one for every single student but it would be nice to have a paper clip though but you don't need a big jumbo binder clip for everyone but but we want to be able to keep all the pages together make sure none of them get mixed up in the mailing process um, that's the idea okay then after you have a cover sheet for every student you'll just simply take all of these books all of these submissions artwork and everything the original no scans the original place it in your manila folder and put it in the mail address to me at the address i listed earlier okay that's the submission process it's that simple um, December 14th is the major deadline for it so be sure please to have all your work turned in submitted by then I talked a little bit about writing with pictures a minute ago at the beginning I should say I'm a little I'm a little um, uh, green at this whole uh, video um, ography type stuff where I'm actually creating these videos from home so bear with me usually we do this in the studio at the holler um, my TV show that I'm doing locally is recorded at the Pike TV studio so this is all new to me so bear with me I apologize for any hiccups okay um, writing with pictures is a book that we have obtained uh, for every class so every class is going to get a copy of this amazing book by Yuri Shulvitz and it really breaks down for you the process of creating a book even um, elements um, of book design but more importantly and how this ties in with writing is it talks about telling telling the story with pictures so how do you add to a story with the pictures how do you put elements in there um, content of the story adding to it without you know changing the story of course but this is an amazing book it really helps students to look at to look at stories differently and they bring in important um, um, references here from books that we've all probably read from where the wild things are to Eric Carl's The Hungry Caterpillar. Um, all these books we have, to tell a Peter Rabbit and stuff, we reference these to show how an illustrator would use certain things. And what I really like about this too is it teaches about the publishing process. So it does go into the back here when you move forward. It does talk about, um, like here's an example on cross hatching for inking, for coloring. Um, amazing. So it talks about book layout, what are the different layouts for books, elements of style. These things, it's just a wonderful book, and please be sure to get your copy by contacting Kelly or, or I and let us know, and uh, we will make sure get your class gets a copy of this. These were available to be picked up at the um, Promising Practices uh, Summit that, that um, we had earlier uh, last week with KVEC, so they were, these were at my table. Some people came by and picked theirs up. Um, we have, still have a few who haven't done that, so be sure, please, if you haven't already, and... Uh, get your copy or let us know if you need it okay alright so we're talking about the submission process I want to talk a little bit while I have your attention on style and how to create this stuff and submit it with wording this is a mini comic meaning that this comic was created by somebody at their home on their printer Ben Sears is from Louisville Kentucky he's a cartoonist an illustrator this little book he put together and you can see all this stuff is homemade so my idea for this project is you to approach your picture book, chapter book, or graphic novel in the sense that you're creating your book there in the classroom. So when you send us that book, all I need to do is scan this page, clean it up a little bit, and then be able to put it into the program to send to the printer to print. Okay? Um, 
but when we're talking about wording, this is this is considered a comic or a graphic novel. He's hand lettered all of his work. Okay, those of you creating graphic novels or picture books, um, remember I told you you could hand letter your, your your words. That means you could write those in the page yourself instead of typing them or, or or other ways you can actually just hand letter those. Now to do that properly, you know, I hope everybody is taking their time to 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 write clearly so that it can be it can easily be seen when you look through the book. I want to be able to see and tell exactly what it is you're writing. So your handwriting, your lettering as we call it, should be nice and clear and crisp. And um, that was my goal for this really is for you to do that. Now Ben has done a great job in creating this little mini comic. Um, we also have another one here to show you. This one is actually from Alexis Frederick and she created this neat little story. This is all homemade too. It's called The Courtship of Miss Smith. Now look, she used construction paper and she's actually um, cut this out to look like a black widow. I hope you can see that, no glare on it or anything. But she's hand lettered hers as well. And as you can see now, each box, each panel um, has been arranged so that the story, you know, is narrated at the top and then the, the, the speech balloons carry the story, communication in the story. But she's added elements like the music coming in through the window. All these things add visually to the story. So the story could say beautiful music coming from outside, right? That's that's what she heard. But in the visual aspect of the story, we actually see these music notes coming from outside the window. They're flowing in through the window into her room. So these are the things that I really hope we can all think about and, and understand and get, to, get familiarized with when it comes to uh, publishing and creating books and what it is to combine art with words, okay? All right, so these are all elements that, that we should have been thinking about, and uh, hopefully hopefully you have been thinking about these. I want to show another example now. This is a student who was published last year. This is um, Abby uh, Webb and Sarah Colvin from, this is from Paintsville High School. Paintsville always has great work. Well, every school that's been submitting has been amazing work, but this is one example. Now, you can see here how this looks now. This is the cover. Last year, Abby did not submit a cover, but her work was so... No, she did. I'm sorry. She did She did submit a cover. I think the problem with her cover, though, was that it was... This is it. It was It was really too dark. Um, couldn't really make it out. So when I actually scanned this, it was just it was just black, and, and I couldn't do much with it. So you can see what work that I'll do uh, for your book, preparing it. I add all this information in. All the pages have to be set up for print. You don't just send files to a printer. The files have to be collected. You have to scan them. You have to you have to uh, incorporate bleed areas. So when this page is cut off, what's going to be cut off? What's going to be left on? You got to take into account the what we call a gutter of the book. So the files, um, no to, artwork shouldn't go too close into the gutter to the spine. Okay, um, adding um, the words. I had to top the words out. She hand wrote her words, but she, nothing against um, their lettering at all. But it was just a little. You couldn't really make out certain things, so I hand topped everything out again uh, for them. But this is one way to do it. You can you can hand top your your words and on a on a um, word processor like Pages or or Microsoft Word, print those out and include those in your book. That's one way to do it. We talked about that earlier on. Okay, um, here's an example of a flyer that Abby has created. This is something when you do your book signings that you'll have to create. So we have a picture of each one, the illustrator and the author. All right, we have a synopsis here, right? Okay. Um, and then we have a logo for their business, right? So these are all things. And then contact information too, if you want to include that for people can actually find out later on where to order online. You have to create this later on. If, if you're one of the 35 to be published, this is stuff that you'll have to do for your small business, okay? Uh, one of the six to go on uh, to actually participate in the Entrepreneurial Challenge will definitely have to do this. But the 35 that will be published, you'll have, will have book signing, um, a book signing available for you all to participate in. And these are types of things you'll have to have for that, okay? But moving on, looking at lettering some more. You can see now I've hand topped all this in, so 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 this is off a um, I topped this into the actual program. I uh, used Adobe InDesign to lay out the template for this book, and as you can see, the words they 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 are they don't look too far off from the color here because this is all one program. Sometimes when we scan a hand top page to be included in a book, it can look a little 
little different than the artwork. So I'll have to work with that and make sure everything looks looks appropriate. But yeah, this is one of the published works, and it, this was an amazing book, great story, um, all the way through. So very proud of that. So hand lettering is an option, of course, and then also um, typing your word, your 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 story on a um, word processor and including that with your with your book. Okay, now this is what it looks like uh, when it's published. On the back, we have the um, Star Publishing logo, the KVEC logo, and then that the detailed thing about this book. There'll be a barcode included on the six to go on to be published that will be able to be scanned and so on. So, just very, very cool. I, I can't wait to see this this year's uh, submissions. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit from Ted Hudson's book. This is really probably the the uh, start of of where Star's Publishing. Um, originated in an idea for this because Ted wrote Noah's Ark and I went and helped him along with Donna Combs to put this book together. I, I prepared the files for print for Ted and did the layout for his interior and things so in his cover. All these elements that you see like Ted's cover here um, remember I asked you to create a cover this is all stuff that has to be laid out in the in the program they use for print. When I send this to the printer this is all one file one giant file. I have to put the lettering in for the spine. I have to include all these elements that you see on this page, on this cover. I have to include that. Um, so this is all work that will have to be done later on. But Ted um, has his front matter. Well, remember the front matter? That's interior title page. Um, his bio, okay, with a picture. This is copyright information. That's Ted's logo for his business. And then we have a dedication page. You can include that too. That's perfectly fine. Also, um, here you see an interior title page here. Um, then you can see the hand lettering that was done for his work. And I'm sorry, not hand lettering, but top lettering. This is something that I had to do for Ted. Um, he had words, but we needed to clean those up and we needed to put those in here so that you could see it. Um, so you can see how the elements came together to create this. And again, this is hand lettering. If you send in a story and I need to hand letter it, I will. I'm sorry, not hand lettering. Why do I keep saying that? Uh, this is all digital input. So if I need to include that, I will uh, for you. If I have to hand type it, I will. But I need to be able to read the story. So be sure if you submit it, um, you know, to have it as is and make it so that you have no spelling errors or, or um, run on sentences, sentence fragment stuff, your grammar's. Um, spot on things of that nature okay make sure that's really really important a couple more examples here now this is something that we're all pretty much familiar with this is called um, the book of the, the name of this book is a lot in the attic and this is by um, Shel Silverstein we talked last workshop about poetry didn't cover poetry too much this workshop because honestly we didn't have a lot of folks interested in putting together a poetry book but the reason I'm sharing this is Shell has put together many books where he combines hand-drawn illustrations with a poem. Um, this is another use of sequential art and something that we could do together. Um, if this is something that you're interested in, maybe we'll include it if we get enough response. The people, students who actually want to do poetry um, will include that as an option for maybe the next workshop. Um, but you can see how this kind of breaks down what I had in mind for the chapter book though so that you'll have words on the page and then ever so often you'll have a little sketch or a drawing and then at the beginning of course of the chapter or drawing but this is sort of what I had in mind think of Diary of a Wimpy Kid you'll read the book and then there'll be a drawing somewhere inserted on the page sometimes at the bottom middle top it doesn't matter all throughout the book so that's what I had in mind for that but if you're interested in poetry and you like to you like to write poems and things, check out Shell Silverstein. This is an option maybe later on down the road for us if you're if you're interested in this type of work. Okay. Another example for the lettering. This is um, the Pirate Ship Bed Trip. I, I illustrated this book, written by Nancy Quackenbush. This was published by Hidden Wolf Books in St. Augustine, Florida. And inside of this book here we'll see the words are placed on the page with a halo behind them this is something I can I can do for you and I did last last workshop for a couple books I think Lily the cat was one and the animals in the cake Elizabeth Hall out of um, I think she's out of uh, Breathitt County I did 
uh, some work similar to this for hers where we had this halo behind the words now this is something that we can do with yours but I have to be able to read your story I have to be able to tell exactly what you're saying so if you want to add the words on your page that's up to you as we've been talking about all along just I can't stress this enough be sure and clearly um, clearly draw right all your words so that it looks good on the page and it's very readable okay that's really really important had some questions come in one or two not many but enough to spark a, um, a, um, a little bit of a segment here before we do that though covered I did have one more example there shall I be I covered this before this is a book that I illustrated for Mark Matt Miller this is actually a novel this is not a uh, chapter book or a picture book but it had a great example here of um, all throughout the book actually of where we drop in these illustrations so for a chapter book what I had in mind what I envisioned is that you'd be reading and then boom you could hit with this really nice illustration um, Mark chose to place the illustrations throughout the book in various locations such right here um, so so the, the story of I mean this particular chapter continues on so so the words continue on but we have a nice well, I hope it's nice I drew it but we have an illustration in here plugged in in between this break of a sentence so this is what I hoped and had in mind for you to do something similar to this for your chapter books hopefully you are hopefully it's close to that okay all right so now uh, let's move on and look at lettering lettering is something that a lot of students have had questions about and we're going to focus a little bit on lettering now and we're going to show you an example of lettering using what's called an Ames lettering guide I don't expect students to have this but this is for graphic novels questions came in what is an Ames lettering guide well this is it right here this is an Ames lettering guide now you gotta think about this now back in back in the day as we'll say um, before um, Photoshop and InDesign and things cartoonists had to hand letter their own work all the time there was there were no uh, computer programs that would allow you to do that how they did it though they used an Ames lettering guide so they would position this with a ruler and we got to imagine that there is a um, well I'll go ahead and draw one that way it'll be easier to see here is a word balloon so what cartoonists would have to do they have to go in with this Ames lettering guide and they would adjust this it's a wheel that turns and you can't see it but on the edge are numbers and these numbers are millimeters when I set this to a certain um, setting it causes a distance between these holes and these holes are based on whatever size uh, between the lines that I want so for instance if I put this on a um, on a setting of let's say 10 okay that means that there's uh, the space that I have is going to be in between the lines that I use um, a set a set distance so um, length I mean so what I do is I take my pencil and I put it through the first hole you can see how that sort of, that works it created a nice line and then I would place my pencil in here and I'd create the line below it now this is how cartoonists would have to letter their work and they would keep on doing this process and you'll notice that there's a space in between these two lines here and I'll show you why that is in a second but they would continue this process until they had this entire balloon filled up with these lines and then they would go back in and they would hand letter this so here we have some lines you can see now the space in between isn't used that's just to create space between the lines so what I'm darkening in wouldn't be used okay but this would so you may say um, hey let go of my shirt that's mine so you can see how this would work okay um, the letters would go on top of the lines with the space in between and this is the Ames lettering guide then the cartoonist would go back in and they would ink these words and erase the pencil line so that is actually the process of hand lettering um, back in the day okay all right so for a quick sketch using this marble method that I'm always talking about um, my idea for this workshop was really for students to get an idea of um, what it's like to take pictures and put those to words I wasn't worried too much about the style of art or how well someone 
draws something or uh, m my major concern was the ability for them to or for you to um, create pictures with words to tell a story and have those pictures actually um, you know enhance the story in some way okay the marvel method that I've shared with you in these videos is just one technique of many techniques I know some students don't like it I know some students would rather just go in and draw without using uh, anything to help guide them if that's what you'd like to do that's fine okay this is just an example though of what you can do I like using circles and shapes to add to the drawing so I can tell um, where I want to build up a certain feature uh, when I say feature I just mean a part of the drawing hands uh, eyes things like that so we got this uh, this student here this guy who's put a backpack on him um, he's going to school make his backpack really big like a rucksack there we go we call it rucksacks in the army were super heavy and and uh, I just imagine some students carrying these massive backpacks to school sometimes so now I've, um, I've penciled in this using the marble method using circles and various shapes to, co to create this little cartoon of this uh, little student here with his backpack on his massive backpack and now you ink over your lines remember as I stated at the beginning of this uh, tutorial if you'd like to have me come back to your school or come to your school for the first time we are going to be doing some revisits we have since we've extended our deadline um, we'd like to carry out some visits um, if you're interested in that please contact myself or Kelly Thompson and let us know and we will set up a date to come out to your school work with your students on maybe a problem they're having maybe there's something that they need a little more clarification on things of that nature we will definitely come out and and work with your students some more so but you have to contact us in order to get that set up okay <laughs>
Well, this person had another take on it. He said that it's more of combining graphic design and poetry, which is something I'm, I'm not really, really um, too knowledgeable about when it comes to poetry, but I like certain poetry um, and poems and things. But, but it made sense more to me because the comics medium, okay, sequential art, is being used more and more uh, by artists, young artists and old, to tell their own stories with. So it's a medium that, that is really new in terms of what you can do with it. Telling your own story, stories that are important to you. So these things are really important to me. And as a graphic designer, I like to see things that, you know, look neat and interesting and, and, and different visually. Um, but I also like stories. So really more than anything, this workshop's been about combining those two things. I really hope you took it serious. I hope you had fun. I hope this has been a really educational process for you. If you've watched all the videos and you've paid attention to the tutorials and you've went through the program, then it has been, I feel, very entertaining and very educational. If you've left out bits and pieces here and there, well, just like with anything, those missing pieces can really affect your total picture of things. So. I really appreciate everyone participating. I appreciate all the involvement, the interest. Um, I would like to see more people on the holler.org sharing their work. Of course, down the road, if we're able to do this project again or something similar, uh, I think it's going to get more and more, um, um, you know, let's say ease of access for folks to get on there and, and able to, uh, to share their work. The website's amazing. You can use it to share and create forums, and that's what we've done. But... It's more uh, of a thing about getting people, you know, actually involved in getting on there and logging on and sharing. No one wants to be the first, right? So we want to have that ease of access for everybody to feel comfortable sharing their work, especially when it comes to art. You know, art, when we share it, people automatically look at your work and they'll, they'll think a certain, they'll have a reaction, and we can't help that. We all react, even when we don't want to judge something uh, based on certain things, we, we all react to what we see. It's human nature. So it is a little scary sharing your work, and I understand that. But hopefully as we move forward and, and hopefully have more workshops similar to this one, we'll all be a comfortable um, sharing our process because it's all about process, really. Okay? Thank you so much. I can't wait to see your submissions. And again, if you want to have me at your school, contact myself or Kelly Thompson. Let us know, and we'll set up a date to come out that works best with your schedule. Big thanks again to KVEC, um, the Kentucky Valley Educational Co-op, they're, they're an amazing organization, and I don't just say that because I work for them. Um, they do a lot of good for our, our region, 17 plus counties, so it's a positive thing. Also, Project Prevent, can't say enough great things about Project Prevent and their efforts in our schools. So, thanks again. I look forward to seeing your submissions. Um, and until next time, keep drawing. Mm -hmm.